operating system deployment via uh, SCCM. This is part 12 of uh, SCCM Home Lab series that I started a little while ago. I will go over four methods of uh, OS deployment uh, in this video. Uh, the first one is wipe and reload. Uh, it means uh, it's gonna completely wipe an existing operating system uh, that is installed on the target machine and reload the operating system that I am deploying to. Uh, if, uh, the, the operating system that I'm going to deploy uh, would be uh, Windows 10, 18 or 9. Uh, the second method is in-place upgrade. Uh, uh, with this method, basically, if there is any older version uh, or older operating system that is installed uh, on the machine, uh, let's say Windows 7, that's what I'm gonna show you. It will upgrade from Windows 7 to Windows 10. And then uh, the third method is uh, Windows 10 servicing. This is the new model that Microsoft has introduced. Uh, uh, and the uh, majority of the, the companies are actually moving this way too. So in this method, it basically upgrades the older version of Windows 10 to a newer version. So in my example, uh, I think I'm just gonna show you probably moving uh, from uh, Windows 10 18 or three to uh, Windows 10 18 or nine, or maybe even later if that is available uh, by the time I'm gonna get to that video. And the last method uh, is bare metal operating system deployment. Uh, this is the way of deploying operating system on a bare metal hardware without any operating system. It's just like if you go to a computer store and bring a computer that does not have any kind of operating system error, operating system ever installed on it. Uh, and then uh, you basically set up in the lab and just try to deploy the operating system. Uh, with the configurations that, that you wanted. Uh, those of you who don't know me, I'm a BB, a software engineer who likes to uh, share the knowledge. If you have not subscribed to my channel yet, please go ahead and subscribe and hit the bell icon so that you could get all uh, future, uh, you could get the notification for all of my future videos. Let's move to computer screen and start with a wipe and reload method. I, do, I also want to mention uh, that uh, uh, each uh, uh, section I'm going to cover in a different video. So please uh, don't subscribe. Uh, don't forget to sub subscribe so that you could uh, get notified for uh, each piece uh, as soon as it's uh, uh, uploaded to YouTube. Thank you so much. Let's get started. All right, uh, I'm going to log into SCCM server, uh, which is uh, SCCM01. I, I created this earlier uh, in this lab series, just in case if you're new. So first thing first, uh, you are gonna need uh, uh, Windows 10 ISO. And uh, if you don't have the access to MSDN, you could also go and download uh, Windows uh, 10 Enterprise uh, Evaluation ISO at uh, this URL. I will copy this URL into the description of uh, this video. Uh, once you land on this page, uh, simply click on start your evaluation. Uh, this would give you Windows 10 Enterprise for 90 days. Uh, that's more than enough for you to actually practice if you are uh, just getting your feet wet with, with imaging. So uh, click on uh, start. Uh, select the ISO Enterprise, click continue and then it will ask you to fill up uh, some of a few of the information uh, once you filled and then click continue it will start downloading uh, uh, the windows iso for you once you have it downloaded which uh, i have it here just to show you real quick to save some time um, just uh, i have it here so that's the ISO, uh, right click it and uh, mount. This will mount it as a, a, a drive. Just go into that uh, and then uh, browse to the sources folder. Within the sources folder, you're going to see uh, a file uh, name install.wim. This is the file that you need uh, to deploy. This is actually, that's the operating system. Rest of all, all it is 
uh, how you install if, if you're trying to double click uh, there is a lot of logic setup.exe so it's, it's all you're gonna need is install dot wimp copy it uh, to your staging location on sccm uh, server uh, the way i have it uh, copied and state i actually have one uh, extra drive which i have uh, i'm calling it a uh, storage within the storage i created a new folder called osd uh, this is how i'm gonna manage all of my imaging uh, and that's where i'm gonna stage all of the the files that are related to my operating system deployment within that i created uh, wimps and then i created subfolders based on uh, the operating system and uh, also the version of operating system so in this case the vim that i downloaded is windows 10 uh, 1903 uh, is x64 which is a 64 bit and that's where i have stated i also want to show you something else uh, that i will also be uh, staging the drivers uh, that's not going to happen in this video but uh, that's how the way i have uh, created the folder structure for drivers is the drivers packages and then sources packages are the one that would be the driver packages the one that i will actually deploy uh, sources is the the source downloaded directly from the vendor <coughs> under sources i have uh, another uh, subfolder based on the operating system and then within the operating system I'm going to separate them based on the vendor. It makes it a little bit easier, cleaner, and uh, also when you deploy it by a, a doing a query for those drivers, it makes it much easier and the image time is much lower versus if the uh, system is, is searching for those. And I'll, I'll show you down the road how, how we are going to manage the drivers too. So I have the VIM. Now I'm going to launch SCCM console. So there is one thing that uh, initially when I was setting up the SCCM uh, installation, uh, that's the I believe uh, video number three of this series there was one thing I actually should have done it uh, during the installation but since I didn't I want to make sure that it is done now uh, you need in order for you to deploy the operating system you need an account uh, a network account that has the access to this Vim file it can be just a read access so that would be also an AD account. So I'm just gonna go and add that account so that it can read from here and then copy it and deploy it to whichever location it needs to be deployed. First, obviously it's gonna get loaded to distribution points and it's gonna go. So uh, to set up that account, go to admin, then uh, go to the sites configuration, select the site, and configure site components, software distribution point, and network access account. That's where you want to add that account to. I am going to use uh, uh, only one account, the one that I have been using uh, uh, all along, which is SC underscore admin. But uh, it's a good idea if you are trying to do this one in production, create a separate account, separate AD account, that uh, has just the read access. Uh, it does. It should not be a domain admin account. Obviously, just in case if somebody hacks into it and they they find a user ID and password, you could be potentially in a huge trouble. So I will add an existing account, which is that's the account that I have already added uh, into the SCCM. So it's available to me. Okay. All right. Apply. If you are missing this part, your image will fail. So just in case, if for any reason you have missed it, make sure to, this is the very first thing you wanna come check. So account part is uh, squared away. 
Now we we'll go to software library, operating system, operating systems images. And since you see there is none uh, over here because I need to import one, which is the one that, that installed .vim. So right click and add operating system. Get the path, which would be basically the UNC path you cannot give the it doesn't take the the, the drive letter so you will need to put uh, slash slash SCCM 01 slash S I'm going to copy and paste it so that it's easier for me to hear. Do that and then click browse. And that's that's that my info will file. Just open. Next. This is where uh, you're going to obviously name it. Uh, and the naming convention that I'm going to use is going to be Windows 10 1903 x64 Enterprise. And you could put and if you want to leave any kind of commands you could just put your commands here click next quickly go over it whatever the selections that you are make, making verify the path click next and it should be all green uh, uh, jacks if there is any red something was wrong so you might want to correct that uh, uh, error and then then move forward so we have uh, the image uh, imported now i'm going to distribute it right click distribute content next the distribution point next next and uh, this would start distributing if you refresh it you're gonna see it's orange in progress uh, it should take uh, like few minutes while this one is doing you also need to distribute the boot images so the next step is go to the boot images uh, right click and distribute it Do the same thing to 32-bit one, which is x86, distribute. And by the way, this, I'm going to show you a very basic of how to do this image. <clears throat> you could do a lot of fancy stuff with it, but since we are starting, I'm gonna show you very basic and as we build, then we're gonna just get into some advanced stuff too. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me this is done this is done and operating system <clears throat> is still uh, copying because it's, it's a decent size I think three point something gig so that's why it's taking just a little bit longer for it to copy just just I'm just gonna pause it Right, so this one is uh, distributed successfully. So next thing I'm gonna do is I'll just go ahead and create a task sequence. So go to the task sequence, right click on it, create a new task sequence. Select install an existing image package. Click next. Uh, name the task sequence. I'm gonna name it as Windows 10 1903 x64. You could put some more description if you want to. And in the boot image, click browse and select uh, x64, which is a 64 bit. Click next. Browse uh, package, click browse. And we have only one, that's the one that we are deploying. And here you could see that uh, since I imported the 
vim just out of the box there is a way to clean up where uh, these indexes it can be removed and you would have only whichever one that 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 you try to deploy so in one of the advanced uh, 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 video I'm just gonna add, I'm gonna show you how to do that one but for now just go and uh, select the enterprise which is uh, the index 3 partition and format the target computer check it I'm not going to get into the bit locker for now so to make it simple just uncheck that one if you have a product key you could enter it here if you have let's say if you're deploying a, a mac key you could use that one too any any or or if you have a camera server you could just leave it as is and then the as the, once the machine is on domain it would automatically get activated but for this lab purpose just just leave it here uh and uh, I will uh, put the uh, local admin password just in case something goes wrong and uh, I need to log into it click next I want this machine to join domain so click join a domain click browse and bb.local <coughs> And then click uh, browse to which uh, uh, OU you wanted to join. I I mean I have not uh, worked on the OU side yet, so they are kind of pretty generic uh, for now. So just I'm gonna put it into computers. Click OK. Specify the account that has permission to join the domain. So you're gonna have to set that one up. Go click browse, and I am going to use the same account, the one that I I've been using sc underscore admin click check verify successfully uh, it's gonna ask you for a password test connection successful click ok next uh, this is where uh, the default uh, SCCM client that would get installed if you have a different kind of versions don't worry for now but uh, that is a lot to play with it too down the road so I'll, I'll show you why you can potentially have different kind of clients too so leave leave everything default click next uh user uh, state migration this is going to be one of the the, the future uh, lecture of whenever i'm going to go to migrating from uh, windows 7 to windows uh, 10. Uh, you could capture uh, the network settings leave everything checked next uh, this is where if you want to install the current uh, updates and the way it works is that anything that you have already deployed uh, to production uh, using the uh, patches deployment like a software update the system would automatically update it but for this lab purpose we're not going to touch it i'll show you in the one of the future video next so if there are any kind of applications that you want to install this is uh, the part where you could do so maybe i could add one let's uh, add maybe google chrome okay and seven tip is fine too and what i'm going to do since i have not thoroughly tested those apps if an application installation fails continue installing other application in the list so let's say windows uh, i mean seven zip uh, uh, failed it's going to move to google chrome and it's going to keep continuing uh, uh, and even if both of them fails the imaging process is not going to stop Next, a summary of uh, what the selections that we made. Next, and everything uh, is uh, showing green. If there were any errors for anything the system cannot find, or or anything uh, that is that the system is not happy with it, you are going to see either warning or or error. So make sure that this is all green. Close. 
So now, uh, if you want to look at this, the way to look at it is just right click it and do edit. And this is uh, going to show you exactly what, what it's doing. Um, on the, the, the very first one, uh, and this is a very generic uh, out of the box test sequence. You could do a lot of fancy stuff with it. Uh, like I have seen like amazing things uh, uh, that, that some of the people uh, do. So um, it's trying to capture the window settings. We're not gonna do anything. Uh, network setting, I will leave it as is. Uh, then it's gonna go to restart in WinPE. That's where uh, the stripped down version of the operating system. Uh, then it will uh, partition the uh, disk if uh, the BIOS, if it's with, uh, booted with BIOS settings. And uh, the part, you could, you could uh, uh, kind of change settings here too for how oh, the disk needs to be partitioned or if you even want to add uh, like extra drives on it, this is where you do it. Uh, same thing if uh, uh, the system has UEFI, uh, that's how it's going to partition it. Then it's going to apply the operating system, which we defined uh, during uh, the prompt. So, uh, then it's gonna do uh, join the domain. Uh, it's gonna apply some of the networking setting. And then this is for the drivers. Uh, I would, for this one, I'm just gonna leave it as a default. And in the next one, I'll show you guys a little bit more about the drivers, because I like to create a separate folder for driver. And then within those, I like to put some conditions, which actually you just go and define the conditions here, uh, based on like, let's say, a, if it's Dell Precision uh, 3510, then it will go through and only apply the driver for that machine instead of just just system going and searching and searching and try to apply the the drivers and and if if system applies it sometime uh, you have seen probably that the the generic drivers wind up getting added and it's it turns into a big mess and especially if it's a place where you are trying to support 20 30 or even more or different kind of models that's where it gets very, very crazy. So it would be, I will create a one full video about how to manage the drivers uh, while doing the OS deployments. Towards the end, um, it's gonna install the SSM client and then it's going to install the applications. This is another time that you could add to if you want to add or subtract more, you could just simply click it and just uh, uncheck uh, to I mean uh, the Red Cross to to delete it or if you want to add another one uh, then you could do that and also oh, sometimes what happens is like let's say that this was uh, Google Chrome was a prerequisite to 7-zip obviously it needs to install first right so you could just kind of move it up or move it down to this is one way to do that uh, so this task sequence, the very basic one is kind of ready. So I'm gonna click OK. I'm gonna right click it. And I will distribute the content. So whatever the package is, whatever stuff that needs to be distributed to the distributor point, it will start distributing. it. So it's going to give you the list of the stuff that is going to get distributed. Um, it's gonna be pretty quick because majority of the stuff is probably already on the distribution point. So click Next. Select the distribution point. Yeah, that's why I'm not seeing any option over here because all of the content is already distributed. So I guess this part, I mean, if there was anything that was not distributed, then it will just take you next, next and just a regular distribution. So I'm gonna cancel it out. Now, what I'm gonna do is I will deploy this to one of uh, a Windows 10 machine that I have, um, I'm gonna quickly create a very a basic uh, collection for that. Uh, that machine name is, uh, I believe, Win 10-3. Let me let me verify it, please. So, 
going to minimize it for a little bit. And this one has, um, as you could see, only Google Chrome installed. And if you want to check the version, what kind of Windows version is installed on it, I'm going to do WinWar. And that's 18 or 9. So this is the one that I am going to, to deploy that operating system so that uh, it can replace it. it go back to SCCM01 right click and I'll call uh, a new collection we could uh, I can call this one what do I have in this dead uh, test one So I have this collection ready, which is right here. I'm gonna go back to, I mean, you could do it from here too if you want, but since we're starting, I'm not gonna do anything different for now. So just go to the test sequence again and select the test sequence, deploy, uh, browse to the collection. That's the warning that is saying that whatever that you will deploy, this is very dangerous what you are about to do. So make sure that that's what you want to do. So I will deploy it to this collection right here. Sorry, my kids are really streaming the heck out of everything right now. So that's why the network is a little bit slow. Next, make it available. And this is where make available to the following. Only configuration manager clients. But there are other ways to make this one available too. So configuration manager client, media and pixie. Only media and pixie. And only media and pixie and hidden. Uh, these are different ways that you could uh, make it available for this demo purpose I'm just gonna go with with this only configuration manager or actually yeah that, that's why next I'm gonna leave everything as is because I want it to to go as soon as possible so just next show task sequence progress yes uh, when the schedule uh, assignment time is reached, uh, this is just the regular deployment stuff, the one that I kind of showed in the past videos too. So just, uh, we could uh, select this. Don't worry about the commit. Uh, internet, I mean, leave everything as default. To, this should be fine for the lab purpose. Next. I'm not going to worry about this in the lab. Next. Leave everything default. Next. Next. All right. So the deployment is set. Now I'm gonna move to uh, that that machine again, and I will force the policy on it. 
so it's going to show actually if you go into software center Just give me a few minutes. I need to install SCCM client on this one. I don't want to confuse you guys. Sorry, I think I was doing some testing on, on something else and I, I don't have the client on this. Be right back. All right, uh, I'm back. So uh, let's take a look at this one control panel. here I'm just gonna update the policy real quick on the machine software center this is where you could uh, see all the deployments uh, that are coming through SCCM uh, you could see the updates are gonna come through here any of the applications that are uh, required or, or are going to or available too they're going to you you'll be able to see them here uh, which uh, down the road uh, once we're gonna get to more details about applications and stuff I'll, I'll show you more on the client side I, I I had created I believe one video about how to deploy the application um, but this machine is not the part of that so that's why you're not seeing it and operating system as you could see is already is showing new here is available and if I click on it I mean you could just simply click on it click install so it, it will give you and this is all uh, kind of customizable and uh, as we grow further I'll show you how to do those uh, basically a, a regular very genetic message that what it would be doing uh, click install installing is basically now going and starting to download as you could just see it here too it's gonna uh, run the test sequence and it will uh, shortly reboot so I'm gonna have to show you guys on um, web uh, browser because uh, obviously this machine would be rebooting so you're not gonna be able to see too much of it uh, through the RDP session so it's right here it's restarting And this working on updates that you are seeing this is not actually part of the task sequence for the one that I pushed this is a machine that I had powered on so it had probably received some of the updates uh, already and whenever you know sometime uh, you probably notice it too during the day the updates uh, came through and whenever you are trying to shut down your machine and it just start applying those updates that's what it is trying to do because it was trying to reboot now but the minute it's going to get rebooted all of these would be wiped away too okay, it's loading new files Hmm. 
now is partitioning the drive. Is applying the operating system. As you could see that that is downloading that install that man. And you could actually name that file to your liking too. So just in case if you want to know exactly what it's doing while you're troubleshooting, it's a good idea to name it maybe something different, something that, that you are working on at that time. I would have named it Windows 10 1903 underscore one. And as the iteration goes, if I was running into some problems, I will just keep adding that iteration to two, three and vice versa. Just gonna pause it just for a second. It's going to reboot.
while it's rebooting, I'm just gonna pause it so that it will save some time. All right, uh, so it has booted. I'm just going to uh, sc underscore admin. Use my awesome password. Let's see. So, so far, so good. This is the part sometimes I kind of get worried because I have seen Windows 10, 10 tends to kind of get stuck here. But I am also positive that it's not going to do this time. It should go through pretty quick. So basically at this time uh, is uh, trying to set up the profile. The very first time when you log into Windows, it sets up the profile for, for that user. So that's what it's trying to do. There you have it. So, uh, one thing though did not happen which uh, i believe is something wrong with those two applications the one that uh, i kind of had a fear because uh, i have one student who is trying to play with those applications so maybe there is something wrong with uh, with those how they are packaged and how they are being deployed so uh, here you have it this is how you deploy a the Windows uh, operating system with a wipe and reload method. Uh, this concludes the first uh, part of these uh, four uh, lessons. In the next one, I'm going to show you how to do in-place upgrade uh, in which uh, we'll do, uh, I would have a Windows 7 uh, machine already built and then I'm going to deploy Windows 10 to it. Uh, hope you enjoyed it and hope you learned uh, some from uh, this video if you have any questions feel free to uh, leave the message in the comment section wherever you are you have a wonderful uh, evening or day uh, peace